How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Happy Saturday to you. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own essential graphics template in After Effects using the motion graphics template structure. What we're going to be doing is assembling an animated title in After Effects then taking a few of the parameters of that animated title and making a template that can be modified in Premiere Pro which could look something a little bit like this. Now I've made a few of these templates and you can go from something super simple to something incredibly convoluted which will look fantastic when you're playing it back in Premiere Pro. Today I'm going to show you something a little bit more on the simple side, but if you're interested in looking at what templates I've made, you can check them out on myselfi.com forward slash DoD Media Store. And if you're willing to do a little bit of digging into my previous videos, you might even find a few of them are free with a coupon code. Anyway, enough of that. Let's jump into After Effects and start assembling our template. All right, so we're in After Effects. We're gonna start off by creating a composition. I'll just go for 1080p, uh, 24 frames per second. In fact, let's make that 23.976 because that's what our cameras shoot. And I'll make this uh, maybe, let's go for 10 seconds. All right, so if I'm gonna base this on the stencil template, which I did as a giveaway earlier this week, what we're gonna to need to do is start off with a shape like this. If you come up to the rectangle tool here, you can just draw a shape. Now the center point isn't in the middle, so we're just gonna come up here and hold down Control or Command and double click while you have it held down and it's gonna center that anchor point. Then we'll just come along to a line and just make sure that it's nice and centered. All right, now let's fill it in white and remove the stroke. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then we're gonna double click on the text layer and just add in something like create your own template. All right, we'll make that black, we'll make that all capitals, and we'll just bring down the scale. Let's go ahead and make that bold. In fact, let's make that really bold. You can use whatever font you want. I'm just using Arial because it's a font that is, you know, on every single machine pretty much. So, you know, something else like Helvetica, that kind of thing, you, you're not gonna get that on a Windows machine. Okay, then select your text shape, and we're gonna center the anchor point again. And then again, we're just gonna align that. And what we can do is just shrink this a little bit so that it fits a bit better, let's say like that. And then we're just gonna come over to toggle switches and modes. And what we're gonna do is on the shape layer one, we're gonna take alpha mat inverted. And what that's gonna do is use the text layer, the black text of that, to define the alpha of what is transparent and what is not transparent on this shape layer. So because the text is black and it's an inverted alpha mask, what it's gonna do is take the black text and say all of the black stuff is transparent. And then we're gonna animate this and because this is a shape layer, what we can do is mess around with the scale in two different ways. As you can see here, you've got transform and there's scale, but you can also transform the rectangle itself by going transform rectangle one. And there you have scale as well. So this is basically gonna allow us to scale an animation on this but then also adjust the size of it later independently without actually messing up those keyframes. So let's just deselect the constrained proportions, toggle on the keyframe, come up to one second in, add another keyframe, select both of those and hit F9 or right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, and that will ease those in. And then if we go back to that first keyframe, we're gonna change the scale to zero. That way if we hit play, it scales up nicely. Now I'm not really liking the speed of that animation, so I'm actually gonna come in here to the graph editor and I'm gonna make it happen faster and finish slower. Maybe even a little slower. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, then I'm gonna copy these keyframes. I'm gonna to come to nine seconds down and I'm gonna paste those keyframes, then right click keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. That way it opens up like that comes up to nine seconds and it closes back and disappears. Actually, I might move these back a little bit just because it's ending on the 10 second mark. So I'm just gonna scooch these keyframes back by one frame. And there we go. All right, now if we come up to window and go to essential graphics, this panel is where we're gonna start putting in all the properties that we want to affect individually, which we can bring over to Premiere Pro and change within Premiere Pro without having to load this up in After Effects. 
So the very first thing we're gonna add there is drop down the text here, text there, and just click source text and plop that down there. And you can change that name to title text. We'll call this stencil title. Now with title text there, all you need to do is type something in there and it will change it. Okay, next up, something that's gonna be important is being able to actually shorten or lengthen that bar depending on what text you have inputted. So if I just put in DoD Media, it would only fill like the middle part of that and it would be a bit weird to have these bars super long. But the thing is, because we've already keyframed the scale, if we were to try and add a bar, a slider, to, to change that, it would add keyframes. So as I mentioned earlier, this is where we need to go into the actual contents transform of the rectangle. So we'll drop down, transform rectangle one, and here you've got scale. Now the thing is, you can't just drag the scale up there because what's gonna happen is it's gonna do both of them at the same time, and that's, that's not what we want. I realized actually that you can in fact drag that scale property up there. As long as you have the constrained properties unchecked, then you'll be able to affect the width and the height individually. But I don't think it's as user-friendly as what I'm about to show you. So if you're interested in learning a bit about the expressions and using sliders for expressions, then just keep watching. What we want really is to have a slider control this. So what we're gonna do is select shape layer one, come to effects and presets, and type in slider. And that will bring up the expression controls slider control effect. We're gonna double click on that, adds that to that shape layer, and now we have a slider control which we'll call width. And I'm gonna come down here, open up effects, width, and I'm gonna drag the slider itself up here. And again, I'm just gonna call this width. Okay, now that that's up there, we're gonna come back to this scale property here. We're gonna alt click on that stopwatch. You'll see these numbers go red and this text appear here. What we're gonna to want to do is add an expression to this, which allows us to separate those two values or to control them individually. Now, before I do that, I've just remembered you actually need another slider on here. So just hit controller command D to duplicate and we'll call this one height. We're not actually gonna use this, but basically it acts as a dummy slider so that we can pair one of these properties to width, one of them to height. All right, and now you just highlight this text and start typing. X space equals space effect, open bracket or parentheses, inverted commas. And here we're gonna use the name of this effect, which is width. Inverted commas again, close parentheses, open parentheses, inverted commas again, slider and close that down. Add a semicolon, go to the next line, y space equals effect, open, one of them, height. Semicolon again, go back to the next line, and then in a bracket, one of these square jobs, type x comma y, close bracket. Now if you set your height to 100, and your width to 100, you get 100% of that original scale. And that's exactly what we want. Now, if we edit range here, we want this to be able to go beyond 100. So let's say it can go from zero to 300. That way we can make this shorter or we can make it much longer. Actually, 300's overkill. It looks like it doesn't go beyond 177. So we'll put that as 175, cool. And there you go. Now you can actually change the width of that bar without it changing the animation. Fantastic. Okay, and then finally, one more property you might wanna to add to this would be a fill, for example, so that you can change the color of that template itself. Now, for some silly reason, After Effects doesn't allow you to drag that fill effect from there, from color, straight over here. So what you need to do is hit E on your keyboard to show your effects, drop down the fill, and then take the color setting there and bring that up. And here you can just put in whatever you want. You can have it as a black stencil, you can have it as a white stencil, you can have it as a gray stencil. All right, and that's pretty much the After Effects part over. What we could do is add a little comment here which says um, slide width slider to adjust bar width. And that way this is just a little comment for the person who's gonna be using this. They will see that it's not editable. It's literally just for instructions on how to use this. So now we go export motion graphics template and it's gonna bring up the destination. You can have it as a local templates folder 
or you can save it just in your drive. Now, the local templates folder means that your Premiere Pro um, directory is gonna be able to draw off of that folder for its motion graphics templates without having to actually physically install it in Premiere Pro. But if you wanted to be able to send this template to someone, then you could go local drive and send it to them that way as a motion graphics template or a .mogrt file. But I just want this in my local templates folder. So you hit OK, it's going to verify the fonts, make sure that the fonts are available everywhere, and there, it's done. Now if we head over to Premiere Pro, go to your Essential Graphics tab, hit Browse, and what did we call it again? Stencil Title, was it? Stencil Title. I'll add it to my favorites so that I can not have to look at the really crappy Premiere Pro ones that are there. Stencil Title, drag that down, and there it is. It plays lovely. Very nice, good animation, and if you click on it, here are your editable features. So let's go for DoD Media. Let's make this white. And let's just scale that bar down to fit. There we go, that looks pretty good. And really the thing to remember with this is that you can you can really do practically anything with an After Effects composition, right? You can have so much stuff happening. You could have lens flares, you could have whatever you want happening. You could have glitches, for example. And as long as you bring over the parameters that you need to be able to edit it later on, or for someone else to be able to edit it who doesn't know how to use After Effects, but who has it installed on their machine, you can do anything, you can do whatever you want, and you don't have to rely on the really shitty templates that Premiere Pro have included in, in that Essential Graphics panel. You can actually make stuff that, you know, looks cool, that doesn't look like your grandmother probably edited that video. And uh, yeah, there you go. If you're interested to know what templates I've made, head over to myselfi.com forward slash DoD Media Store. Uh, as I say, you can dig back into some of the previous giveaway videos to find some coupon codes to get some of those for free. All right, that's all for me. I hope you found it useful to learn how to create these templates, whether it's to try and sell your own templates or just to learn how to do it and become a little bit more creative with your titles and lower thirds. In any case, give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit subscribe to get more videos from me at DoD Media. It's reviews, it's tutorials, it's giveaways, it's vlogs, it's... It's, it's loads of stuff. Leave a comment in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. Check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. Love to see you there as well. And I will catch you next week in the next video.